I've been uh, uh, helped by some of the awarenesses of uh, the psychologist Ken Wilber about precisely what you're pointing to. So that we come into the world uh, with what Wilbur calls uh, an undifferentiated oneness. So, you know, everything's one. And part of what we long for, uh, for our children, is that they may move from that sense of undifferentiated oneness into a sense of self and into a sense of the unique differentiation of those with whom they are being invited into relationship. So that second stage is what Wilbur calls differentiation. But it, it, it is as if we've got stuck at that second stage. And Wilbur speaks about a third stage, which he calls differentiated oneness in which we know the uniqueness, the beautiful differentiation of each one of us, but we don't forget what the child knew, and that is our oneness. And it's something around that journey that I think is uh, such an important part of where we are now, because so much of our culture, so much of our religious tradition has gone, got stuck at the second stage. So much so, that, so much so that we have even articulated notions of individual salvation. As if, the, as if I could be well when my son is broken. I mean, at another level, I know that I, I will never be well when my son is broken. And part of what the new consciousness of our interrelatedness is leading us to know is that we cannot be well when the body of the earth is infected by us, that we cannot be well, we cannot be claimed to be well or strong as a nation when we're violating or ignoring or neglecting the well-being of other nations. I always remember uh, my first visit to India when I spent time with Bede Griffiths, the great Benedictine monk who spent most of his life in India, and who, um, who's maybe his most seminal work was the marriage of East and West. But Bede Griffiths spent a lot of time during our brief conversation together asking about my children. I was a young father at that stage. And I'll never forget something he said. He said, make sure that they have a very strong ego that they have a strong sense of self. So that when the time comes in their life, they will know how to die to their ego in order to serve our oneness. So the way forward is not to somehow downplay the ego or to somehow subordinate, somehow say that it isn't a sacred faculty. It's to say, how do we move towards uh, a living, a being, in which our ego serves the center, instead of pretending that it is the center? But that choosing of the ego is something that happens in relation to a real and healthy strength of the ego. What we're all most deeply yearning for is real connection relationship. And, uh, and that relationship across generation boundaries, so-called boundaries, is one of the keys to the way forward. In my travels, people will often say, um, how are we going to get the young back into the church? And I say, that is emphatically not the question. Why, why would we want to bring people back into a collapsing religious structure? It's not about shoring up the old thing. But if we are faithful in our relationship across
across these boundaries of generation, but also across these boundaries of religion and culture and nations, then we will together find the new forms in which our Christian household can again become a blessing in the world and can again be faithful and strong in the birthing of God among us. But that, that I think, must always be the focus, to be true in our relationships, not to have, in a sense, this ulterior motive of how do we shore up the old thing. Um, it's how can we be faithful in these relationships. And if we are faithful, we will be blessed, because there will be a pregnancy that comes out of true relationship that something will be born or conceived that we didn't know anything about. <laughs>